Hi, this is Phil Shapiro. I finished reading this really excellent book. It's a new book, Writing Interactive Fiction with Twine, Play Inside a Story by Melissa Ford, published by Q Publishing. This is a big, lovely book that explains how you can use some free software called Twine, some open source software, and you can build interactive stories like um, choose your own ending, choose your own adventure ending. Um, remember those kind of books where you could choose your own adventure? And uh, these days they call it interactive fiction. In the early days they used to call it a text adventure. So that kind of computer game was invented in the 1970s at MIT. There was a game called Zork that was one of the most popular computer games of the early 1980s. Zork 1, Zork 2, Zork 3. And so this is like um, the up-to-date manual for using the software Twine, which was invented about 2009, and lets you, um, you can download the software and use it on different kinds of computers, or you can, I use Twine, uh, there's a web interface, uh, so you could do, you could make interactive stories like on a Chromebook. So this is a big, lovely book, about 400 pages. And it's a labor of love. I loved reading it. Um, Melissa Ford is here in the Washington, D.C. area, and I have never met her, but she volunteers at the Loker Coder Dojo. So she helps children write uh, these interactive fictions and learn how to use Twine. And that's pretty fascinating. The person with her talent volunteering with children, it's almost like Michael Jordan is teaching your child how to do jump shots or Albert Einstein is visiting your child's physics class. It's kind of neat. So let's take a look at this book. Here we go. This is uh, from the back, and I'll read just a bit. If you've ever dreamed about walking through the pages of a book, fighting dragons or exploring planets, then Twine is for you. This interaction, interactive fiction program enables you to create computer games where worlds are constructed out of words and simple scripts and can allow the players to pick up or drop objects, use items to collect it in the game to solve puzzles, or track injury in a battle by reducing hit points. So, uh, over here on the right, get familiar with Twine, learn how to design puzzles, build your own role-playing game. Here's the bottom of the back cover. The best part about interactive fiction stories is that they are simple to make and can serve as a gateway into the world of coding for the non-programmer or new programmer. So that is really interesting. Here's about the author. Melissa Ford is an author of many works of fiction and non-fiction. She's been a huge interactive fiction fan since 1982 when her dad gave her a copy of Zork. She is the blogging and social media editor at Blog Her, B L O G E. B-L-O-G-H-E-R, a contributor at Geek Dad, and a Twine mentor at the local computer club. She also writes the award-winning blog Stirrup Queens. Ford earned her Master's of Fine Arts from the University of Massachusetts Amherst. And this big lovely book is sells for $25, the cover price. That's pretty, that's pretty affordable for uh, a book of this quality. Here, uh, the book has, um, uh, the table of contents, this is the brief version, the contents at a glance, and I'll, I'll let you read through that on your own. And then it has a very detailed table of contents, which I didn't scan, but here's the table of contents. So you can look it over and you can get a sense. This is a well-constructed, designed, authored, and edited book. And what I like about the book is that Melissa Ford, the author, talks about the artistry um, of making these interactive fiction. Part of that care comes from pacing of the game. Pacing is how quickly the writer is moving through the, re the writing. The writer is moving the reader through the story. A lot of things go into pacing, including the spacing between action and sequence, how often the reader gets to make meaningful choices, the lengths of the s sentences, and the vividness of the language. Tell the reader too much too soon and you risk having him repelled by rather than attracted to the character. Tell the reader too little too slowly, and you risk having the player grow bored. So this is both um, like a how-to manual, but it's a kind of a guide. There's a lot of wisdom. I found wisdom in here. Um, and then here's the part I really, really loved. 
Um, managing reader expectations. What I'm really talking about when I talk about genre is managing a reader's expectations. This chapter aims to address reader expectations on a multitude of levels. One way to manage reader expectations is to make the unexpected happen. And one way to do that is to introduce a randomization with the either colon and the random colon macros. So this is really neat. You can create a story where each time the player plays, it branches off randomly into a different path. That is really fascinating. It made me squeal with delight when I was reading this, and I bet you children are just going to love showing their friends or parents their interactive story where you don't know what's going to happen next. Even the author doesn't know what's going to happen next. And then this explains um, creating chance. Uh, these are the two macros. Uh, and uh, both macros infuse unpredictability into the story. Well, isn't that fun? That's just so much fun. Now, I do some volunteering to support the local Girls Who Code chapter, and we haven't started trying out Twine yet um, in that group. We have, we're have doing the other stuff, but um, I'm going to be suggesting that some of the girls take a peek at this, maybe separately from the club, because we have other things we're doing in the club right now. And then here's the local Coder Dojo called CoderDojoDC.com. And I asked the founders of this Coder Dojo, who are mentioned in this book, in the acknowledgement, um, and they sent me over here to what's called CoderDojoDC.com Showcase. So this is where you can go and see what our own children, these are just some early stories here, and you can browse through them just to see what it's like. Um, here's a screenshot I wanted to show you. And then one thing I learned about this book is that when, when anybody is making these uh, interactive fiction, uh, at some point you want to share them with the world. And so with Scratch, there's easy ways to share your Scratch games with the world. And there happens to be an easy way that I didn't know about until I read this book. Um, it, it's philome.la, F-P-H-I-L-O-M-E dot L-A is a website where you can put your interactive fiction and then people can go and play it. And people can discover your interactive fiction here. And I made something a long time ago on my Apple IIc computer called Vocabulary Situations that I brought into Twine using the web interface. And then here, it's on Twitter where I uploaded it and people can discover what I made over here. And this is what the philome.la free Twine hosting website is. So I put my thing originally on the Internet Archive, and we'll take a peek at it in just a minute or two, but you could also put it here, and this is a way that people can discover it. And then over here is the philome.la Twitter account, which you could follow, and if you notice, there are 13,000 tweets, which means uh, there's a lot of games, people, uh, these interactive fictions, that you could potentially browse through to get some ideas or inspiration. Um, and you can see there currently are 1,100 followers. So this already has this Twine thing, even though it was invented in 2009, it has a worldwide following, including me and you. <laughs> you and me are now part of this really interesting community of interactive fiction writers and fans. Uh, if you found this book review interesting and useful, you can find more of my book reviews at sites.google.com slash site, Phil Shapiro book reviews. Here's my contact information, my email, my Twitter, my YouTube, and my Patreon. You're welcome to make a small contribution on my Patreon if you like my book reviews. That's always, I mean, you can, you can contribute like a dollar per month. Um, so even somebody who's maybe unemployed or doesn't have much money, they could support um, my book reviews, and then if I can get enough people, then it, it adds up, and I can use that money for little incidental costs in my life. Um, now let's go take a look at what I made with Twine, because um, this is maybe not a typical usage of Twine, but it shows some of the possibilities. So I made this on my Apple IIc, believe it or not, um, a long, long time ago. And it's sitting over here. Let's go over here to Firefox. 
Um, so we're going to go to Internet Archive. I'm going to bring over Firefox. Ah, Linux Mint. Uh, I'm, I'm making this screencast using Simple Screen Recorder on my Linux laptop. I have a nice screen that's 2560 by 1440, hooked up to my ThinkPad T410, which I bought on eBay for about $100 or $125, I think. You can find good deals on eBay if you know what you're looking for. So let's go to the Internet Archive, archive.org. And let's minimize this, maybe. There we are. Let's minimize that. Look, isn't this pretty? Linux Mint. Whoa. Um, now, I want to search over here for vocabulary situations. And let's see. Yep. Uh, vocabulary situations. Here. Here it is. And now we want to click onto the HTML. Yep, and here it comes. So I'm going to make this a little bigger on the screen. Okay. And I couldn't figure out how to change the color, the background color. So this is with a black color. Uh, and I kind of would prefer a yellow, but I couldn't figure that out. So somebody's going to send me an email to explain that to me. So you couldn't play in this week's soccer game. So you call your friend's mom to find out who won. She doesn't know the score, but tells you that your team looked jubilant after the game. As you hang up the phone, you choice number one is sigh deeply at having lost another game, or do a short victory tap dance around the living room. So let's get this wrong on purpose. No need to feel so sad. The word jubilant means joyful or triumphant. Your team must have won for the players to be in such a good mood. And then we go back here. And let's do the correct one. Uh, do a short victory tap dance. Yes, that's right. Jubilant means joyful or triumphant. Um, and then I want to go to question number two, but it's not here. Oops, I might have chosen the wrong one. Let me come back here. Uh, vocabulary situations, maybe I need to try. There was two of them here. Let me come to this one here. Vocabulary situations one, it's called. Okay. That other one was a test. I, I put up a test, but that wasn't the finished one. Oops, here it is. This is the actual one. So do a short victory tap dance. Yes, and let's go to the next question. After going around twice on an amusement park ride, you begin to feel giddy. So the best thing to do would be to, let's get this wrong on purpose, um, go to eat some amusement park food. Giddiness, sometimes called motion sickness, is a dizziness that can be caused by amusement park rides, airplanes, and even cars and buses. Reading a book or magazine in a moving car can often cause giddiness. A good cure for giddiness is fresh air. Let's go back and let's sit down quietly. You're so sensible about your health. When you're feeling giddy or dizzy, the best thing to do is sit down quietly. The worst thing to do is to go eat some food. You can't imagine what would happen if you did. You and your friend have spent hours creating a gingerbread house for a Christmas banquet. The best way to carry it from the kitchen to the dining room table is, well, it's a gingerbread house. You should maybe carry it gingerly. You would be correct. Let's go back. Let's get it wrong. Say hastily. If you carried the gingerbread house hastily, it could very well end up splattered across the kitchen floor. The word hastily is an adverb meaning hurried, urgent, carelessly, impatient. So this was my own dabblings uh, in twine using my vocabulary situations. Uh, and you can come and see all my corny humor. Um, and maybe you can get some ideas for what your own students could make in this genre. Um, so this is Phil Shapiro, writing interactive fiction with twine, a highly recommended book. You should, you should request that your public library buy a copy and your school library buy a copy. Um, um, and tell some of your geek friends about it. And then we will create a culture where everybody is writing stories and reading each other's stories and interactive things. And who knows what talent is out there just waiting to be uncovered, the talent, thanks to a book of this kind. Um, my hat's off to Melissa Ford. She did a fabulous job. And same thing with the editors and publisher. Um, this is really a top-notch book. Bye. Oh, hi. It's me again. 
If you're interested in open source and education, as you might be if you saw my book review of Melissa Ford's excellent book, then you might also be interested in the Open Schoolhouse book, written by Charlie Reisinger, IT director of the Penn Manor School District in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, about 80 miles west of Philadelphia. And here's the website for the book, theopenschoolhouse.com. You can download the book as a free PDF and you can buy the book as an e, uh, here's how you get the, uh, the free PDF. You say, get the book and come down to source manuscript. After you read the book, maybe you want to buy, uh, an ebook version or the hard copy. It's a really nice way of thanking the author. Um, when I was reading the book, it, it read like, as if it was almost like, uh, a doctoral dissertation. It was that well written. Uh, I've done a book review of this book, both in English and Finnish. These days, you know, you got to do English and Finnish. So go to YouTube and you can find my book review here, the Open Schoolhouse book review in English. And then I also have the Finnish version. So, um, Suomo leiset kolut ovat malmen parhaita, which means Finnish schools are the best in the world. It's uh, what people need to know. If you want to follow Charlie Reisinger on Twitter, uh, here's his Twitter name, Charlie3. I made it in a nice 96-point font so people can see that. And, whoopsie, here's a book review. Um, I first met Charlie here on the opensource.com website. This is sponsored by Red Hat. It's a website that celebrates all parts of open source software and open source culture. And Charlie's written a bunch of very, very interesting uh, blog posts here. Scroll through and find something that he can teach you. Um, I also love on this website, Nicole's writing, Nicole Engard. She now works for Red Hat and she had a whole career in uh, library science. And um, uh, she's an excellent writer and often has many interesting things to say. So scroll through some of the stuff that she's written I commend her to your attention. Uh, Don Watkins writes uh, prolifically, and I just read something today. He wrote, Meet Bill Pollock, founder of No Starch Press. So I'm often informed and inspired by stuff he's written. Stu Karoff is the, um, Stu Karoff over here in St. Paul, Minnesota. Uh, he's with the Asian Penguins, the founder of the Asian Penguins Computer Club. Um, He's written a lot of interesting articles here. And then if you'd like to read some of what I've written, I wrote for PC World magazine for about five years, 2007 to 2012. And here's one of my better blog posts. Does free software restore dignity? You can look that up. I also have done some writing for Make Magazine. So come over here. Uh, this is I'm proud of. The, the Book of Audacity book review. This is a totally excellent book. It's jam-packed with interesting and useful information. I really recommend your public library buy a copy, and maybe also your school library, and maybe also your makerspace, and maybe also your little free library. Um, if you have absolutely nothing better to do, you might want to read some of my blog posts over here on opensource.com. I've written about 50 blog posts. Scroll through and see if there's something that catches your attention. Uh, if you'd like to submit a blog post, to opensource.com. They love submissions, the editors over there. And I really recommend if you're a high school student or even a middle school student or a college student or anybody else that you think about what you might want to submit. They're very encouraging and your writing skills don't even have to be that strong because they have a free copy editing. So, uh, the way to get involved over in opensource.com, opensource.com slash participate. This website's busy. Uh, it's grown to as much as a million page views per month. And it's been around, I think, six or seven years now. And it just keeps getting busier. So in the coming years, it'll grow to two million or maybe five million page views per month. And you can be part of that growth. Wouldn't that be exciting for you to be part of that growth? I should mention over here with the Open Schoolhouse, this, this book is mostly of interest to students and teachers and parents and taxpayers and school principals and school superintendents and uh, also mammal, mammals and reptiles. Um, 
I would say single cellular organisms, uh, endoplasmic reticulum, mitochondria, and uh, inanimate objects.